Ladies and gentlemen, hello. My name is Sarah and welcome to the next episode of The Edge of Chaos. Today we'll be talking about AI versus money. Now, I'm based in the NGO Parallel Polis, um, which essentially kind of brought crypto to life and it brought it to the local scene in roughly 2014. Um, uh, so that we're all getting excited. I mean, I wasn't here back then. I was like still doing cognitive evolutionary anthropology at Oxford. But um, um, the people that build this place up uh, were uh, already talking about the fact that Bitcoin has almost the same value as the dollar so it's very exciting so you can imagine um the excitement now um except um i didn't come here because i was interested in crypto and i know that might make me a bit of a philistine but um actually what i'm interested in is the concept of reciprocity um as is mentioned by marcel mouse in um his um book le don or the gift um in french um who's one of the pioneers of modern anthropology um so so basically like, what i want to talk about is the concept of history evolution the evolution of value uh, culture, codification, and crypto. Crypto is a, only a very, very small part of what is actually interesting about how modern technologies and um, money are kind of colliding together. Um, so I just want to make sure that like, you, you don't think of this like a webinar on um, what crypto to invest in, because I, I don't actually know. I'm, I'm actually like pretty shit at, um, at crypto, and I, I hold so little, and I'm not really good at it. Um, but what I do love is the um, principles, the kind of decentralization of it, um, the... Um, various possibilities of whether that's um, uh, decentralized autonomous organi uh, organizations, whether that's um, uh, decentralized gaming, whether that's um, kind of decentralized finances, like all these things are really interesting peer-to-peer -peer services that have kind of been the wet dream of arche archaeologists and anthropologists for decades, but we just didn't have blockchain to really um, model it on. So I, I'm, I'm not like a um, blind fanboy, I am more just like an anthropologist, like observing the phenomenon. Um, the key questions, I guess, to ask in terms of um, any form of value is how value is created. It's got nothing to do with money. Money, money is just a um, fetish, fetish, fetish. It's a fetish. <laughs> it's a fetish of value. Um, sorry, I couldn't think of the um, adjective, but um, it's a fetish of value. Um, and uh, value doesn't necessarily have to be bits of paper or bits of um, metal. Um, the concept of value can easily be um, a good deed or anything um, similar. That's come somehow like um, evolutionarily weighed um, according to the other behavior that's given in counterproduced to it. Um, similarly, that kind of like leads to the next question whether like money can exist or not. That, that's another interesting question, in my opinion, whether like we can actually exist in uh, a society without money, um, where money and that kind of exchange mechanism isn't necessarily in place. Um, what does it mean to owe something? Um, so obviously, like if you borrow someone, um, I don't know, uh, ten pounds, you owe someone ten pounds. It's very clearly um, kind of like the numerics of it are very obvious. But what about if like you um, do something good for someone? You kind of can't expect anything back because like it's you can't really put a value on it, and also you should have done it altruistically. It's like you shouldn't expect anything back if you're like a good person. But at the same time, you kind of expect that the next time you're lying in a ditch, that person will help you. Um, and that leads to the fact whether altruism ac actually exists, like whether you can actually do something out of a purely selfless perspective. Um, um, I think that's a really interesting anthropological phenomenon where um, uh, when you take the old granny across the street, um, do you expect some kind of like divine recognition back in return um, where you just hope that you'll be lucky at work or like you'll be lucky in your love life just because like you're doing well and you're doing good deeds in your everyday life. So these are all um, kind of uh, the exchange mechanisms that we do with ourselves um, that, that are often emotional, often psychological, but um, actually I don't think that they're um, philosophically that different from the principle of crypto. Um, you've got the money and the state as well. Um, so the way that the uh, money and the monetary system is defined by the state. And then finally, the global economy. Um, when you've got different um, types of currency, when you've got different types of exchange mechanisms, as you had, for example, when um, you had the silver standard versus the gold standard in Asia and Europe. Um, so you had different metals that were um, valuing out different um, uh, quantities and different um, values, um, uh, bearing in mind like which trade routes were open and therefore which metals were available. So um, these are all very interesting things as well, and um, whether you can actually have a global economy, a global exchange mechanism as well. 
Um, so um, I love this. That there's a, there's a new um, uh, uh, kind of um, it's it's a very small exhibition in um, the British Museum, and it's from um, uh, the exchanging of shells um, that was between um, actually like probably like a hundred thousand years ago, um, maybe a little bit um, sooner um, in the Côte du Pigeon um, in Morocco. Um, you've got these shells that have been painted by ochre, um, and they they were clearly used for some kind of like ritual purposes, possibly for exchange purposes. Um, and then like the difference between that as a symbolic value and the value of um, crypto, it's, it's actually like the principle is very different. Um, uh, so sorry, the principle is very same, um, but the technology, of course, is very different. Um, similarly to the different um, the difference between like Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, th th there are different technological stacks, but nonetheless, the principle of exchange remains absolutely the same. You just get into different philosophical nuances, whether things like rolling back on value, um, uh, or whether value is codified in time democratically. Um, these are the things that you start suddenly um, uh, kind of bearing in mind. Um, similarly, um, what I find really interesting is looking at the Robinson Crusoe economy. Um, the Robinson Crusoe economy is kind of like an almost all-encompassing um, principle where you exchange what you need in order to survive. Um, and uh, those can be services, they can be emotions. Um, so, so often marriages used to be very much a Robinson Crusoe economy to a certain degree, um, where you, you would be basically like exchanging an estate for an estate. Um, and you used to have like little black books of um, people that would get married to one another. They used to be very basically sophisticated financial transactions, but also transactions of social capital. Because when you married, um, uh, if you were British and you married someone from France and you were like in high aristocracy, that would mean that those two countries would not be able to attack each other. So um, there were very strategic principles of reciprocity and kind of caution and looking after and protecting value um, uh, that again are very interesting to kind of like look at from a historical perspective. Um, uh, what I find is a uh, very interesting or very I mean I find everything interesting but um, is the whole notion of like what you mediate and the value that is mediated versus the value that is kind of given um, and the value that is completely free um, so, so so when you had like the first coinage or where you had the first kind of monetary systems they used to be like pretty punk like like you had like a fixed value of, for example the metal that was given but actually apart from that they were like pretty um lenient um and now that you've got that more uh, like straightforward tokenization of value um suddenly actually the money is very closely controlled they used to usually being printed by a central uh, banking system um, and you very much have like the one distribution of minting um, which was always a very key um, function of towns and cities uh, to be able to mint your own coinage that was always always very very crucial the fact that now you have that um, very centralized whereas that used to be very much decentralized along with the supplying of the raw materials that you had to mint the coinage with um, uh, has been a really interesting um, uh, kind of uh, move forward in time. Um, as you can see as well, um, in terms of um, uh, kind of money and exchange, you have that pretty much everywhere in um, uh, the, the the kind of like various like medieval um, scriptures, the very various medieval papyri, you've got the concept of exchange. Um, the concept of exchange is hugely important, whether that is um, on the standard of Ur, whether that is um, written um, on uh, the, the various kind of like hieroglyphic pap papyri, whether it's in the Mayan codices, you always have the concept of exchange happening. And the exchange is what um, makes the relationship somehow um, codify, somehow valued. Um, this is absolutely my favorite, um, The Life of Brian. Um, the Life of Brian, the greatest thing about it is that um, Monty Python were actually massive uh, kind of historical nerds. Um, and Michael Palin, he read history at Oxford. And I think, no, Eric Idle did. Um, no, he did... Um, uh, uh, English literature at Cambridge and Graham Chapman who's the other guy he did medicine at Cambridge um, but uh, M Michael Palin and also Terry Jones they're massive uh, fans of medieval and early medieval um, history um, and actually Life of Brian is what is basically like a documentary it was actually incredibly uh, historically accurate one of the thing is uh, is the whole concept of bartering now I, I grew up in Vietnam where um you had to barter for pretty much anything. And if you didn't, you're actually seen as incredibly weak, that you weren't playing the social game, you weren't playing the game of barter, uh, which was seen as problematic. So again, like interesting to see that you've got the value, but you've also got the ritual of bartering around that. 
Um, uh, I already mentioned the um, uh, the different shells, but um, let's also look at the different trade routes and the empires. Um, for example, in the first century AD, um, you had the notion of uh, maritime travel, you had the Silk Road, um, you had the technologies that were created alongside that, such as the compass, the domestication of the horse, the domestication of the donkey, all of these things were going hand in hand to make sure that trade was flowing um, fluidly. Um, the thing is, like, uh, what is beautiful is the supply chain logistics. Um, so, for example, the um, when the uh, silver mines of Baghdad um, uh, kind of dried out in the 10th century, um, that had a profound effect on the Viking civilization because um, the silver was traded all, at the knock-on effects were massive all the way up to Scandinavia. So, um, uh, it's really interesting to see, for example, when uh, the Western Roman Empire fell, how the traders were disturbed because of that. Another interesting example is um, Damascus in Syria. Um, so, Damascus, the, the, the main city of Syria, actually always used to be a relatively small village. Palmyra was the main kind of city. Um, but uh, once the trade routes changed and once silk started to be traded through a different route, Palmyra just became this ritual kind of like hipster ground that was unfortunately recently destroyed by ISIS, um, but Damascus very quickly became the key trading ground. So again, uh, interesting to see where, for example, in the Middle East, where you've got the uh, towns and cities with the bazaars, those are the places where trade used to take place and those are the places where the kind of life of Brian-esque situations would take place and therefore where value was created. Um, uh, the uh, notion of coinage um, is another um, important aspect of um, where you actually have the minting and you have the um, specification of what, what it means to have a coin and numismatics is an incredibly interesting science. Um, and actually, I think I'll decide to keep this episode relatively short because I want to get into numismatics a little bit more because um, th there's a whole aspect of, um, uh, for example, the fact this was one of my um, interview questions at Oxford um, where uh, I was given the Canadian dollar and I was asked why the Canadian in dollar is um, inscribed in Latin um, and why it's not inscribed in English if it's like a Commonwealth country. And of course, the reason is that, well, uh, I think, of course, but like back then I was like, I thought I was really clever and figured it out. Um, um, you had the French colonies in um, Canada as well. So you had Quebec, for example. And if you have Quebec who are massively linguistically oriented into French, you don't want to piss them off by having the coinage in, um, in English. So what you do is that you choose the lowest common denominator, which is Latin. Um, so uh, you therefore piss no one off and you moreover, uh, get to um, ascribe your identity um, to um, somehow the Roman Empire, um, at least visually or somehow psychologically. Um, uh, it's, it's also no, no wonder that all the young English public schools and even when we used to have um, dinner at university, like at the start, you'd always say um, a, a prayer in Latin just because it was um, perceived as to somehow be like a old culture. Um, it, it was um, a high culture aspect to do, which is really interesting. But it all derives from the origin of the minting of the coins, um, which I will talk about next time because there's a lot of signs behind that and I would rattle on for like 30 more minutes and you don't want that. So today is a bit of a shorter episode and next time there'll be a bit of a longer episode with numismatics and how value is created um, monetarily in the digital world as well. All right. See you soon and take care.